Are the globalists getting ready to pull the plug on America? I believe the answer is yes. i um, been seeing some really shocking things coming out here lately. Uh, hearing some things about Russian state TV is talking about how to take Amer or, uh, Alaska away from America because it was originally Russian territory and I don't know what all the contract type of stuff might have said there and whatever, I don't know. Um, but America's probably violating the original contract. See the wild apples in the tree above me here? And um, Lord only knows. And the uh, Biden-Harris regime that's in right now has done more to destroy this nation than any other regime in history. I'm no fan of Trump, but uh, Biden and Harris are far worse. Well, then you have to vote for the lesser of two evils. No, they're both evil. Um, and again, you know, it's another sign that the globalists are destroying this nation because we are not being given any choice uh, for any kind of good candidates that would actually fix this nation. And, you know, getting into the politics thing again, yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't really care, honestly. But um, <clears throat> my whole point is you have the thing of Russia saying about maybe taking back Alaska. That's a big issue. Then you have a thing of all the stuff that's going on in Lebanon right now with Israel attacking Lebanon and Lebanon attacking back. Um, and there's threats coming from Russia and a bunch of others saying, you know, to Israel, you know, stop what you're doing. I'm sure Iran is probably saying some things. Um, <clears throat> you have British warships that went down through the, um, or excuse me, the Russian warships that went down through the English Channel. Um, now you have this thing coming out where they're saying that there's going to be a mass casualty event before the election here. So, you know, a little over a month that we have before this thing happens. Um, they're saying uh, it could be held off and whatever else. And why is all this stuff happening? Well, very simply, because I believe that the globalists had a, a schedule, an agenda that they needed to get certain things done. And it's not working. Um, they wanted to get guns confiscated by now. And the American gun owners, thankfully, have been fighting against their gun control agenda. Because American gun owners are a little bit more educated than the globalists thought. And uh, we realized that every time guns are confiscated, historically speaking, a big slaughter follows. And so gun owners say, you know what? Mm, no, not going to give in the guns. In fact, I'll probably buy some more. And uh, I'm in the gun world, definitely. And I, I know some guys that have, uh, to say, arsenal uh, would be an understatement. Um, especially out in the country where I live here. Um, Guns are uh, very much a part of life here. And, you know, they tried to do the pistol brace ban thing and confiscation. That didn't work too good. Um, you know, they've tried to roll out their FedNow program through the stimulus whole thing. That didn't work too good. Um, people have woken up to the central bank digital currency scam and, and uh, no, we don't want that. People are paying with cash. People heard about the great taking, um, <clears throat> and so people decided that they would start paying off their debts, which I thank the Lord for. People are getting out of debt. Good. That's very good. Pay down those debts. Don't go back into debt. Um, make it very hard for the banksters to come and confiscate what you have. Uh, people are buying precious metals. That's another good way to fight the globalist system. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of other things I could go over. But the fact of the matter is, every single time the American people do something like this, the globalists kind of have this mentality, I believe, where they're saying, um, you know, the old saying goes, if I can't have it, then nobody will. Well, the globalists had plans for America, and they still have them. It's still there. But um, I think that their method that they're going to use to bring this country down is they're going to make it very painful. It's going to be a very rough time. I saw uh, Christine Laguardia, or whatever her name is, or Laguardi, or whatever, um, from the IMF. And she was saying about how that the people aren't, you know, really accepting the central bank digital currency stuff. So she said, um, 
unfortunately, there might just be a Great Depression. <laughs> I just saw that the other day. You know, kind of, uh, you know, we'd really like for you to, you know, submit. But if you don't, you know, then bad things might happen to you. You know, little uh, threat there. Um, you see, the only way for them to really bring this in, I think Trump, if he would come in, he'd try to bring it in as Bitcoin. We can use Bitcoin more often, which Bitcoin is a digital currency. Um, the patent is owned by the NSA, uh, which I proved in another video, showed the proof of that. Um, so you could do it through Bitcoin coming in, cryptocurrency, but um, if you don't use it that way, you say, well, we have to bring in the Fed Now program. How can you do that? We have to destroy people financially, bring in a Great Depression, and then when the people have been through enough pain, then maybe they'll accept a digital currency. Uh, what should actually be done is they should get rid of the Federal Reserve altogether and uh, show that it's a fraudulent private run-for-profit corporation. It's not part of the federal government, and it certainly doesn't have reserves. Um, and they should come out with a new uh, currency um, that's backed by gold, and it should be minted by the United States government without any kind of interest being charged. That's what should be done. Okay, um, Whether they will do that or not, I don't know. But see, the worst fear of the globalists is to have to restart the economy and restart everything and, and whatever because Great Depression comes in, which is very soon, I believe. They're going to have to do this pain thing. And if that occurs, then there's an opportunity for people to start to think outside of the box and start to say, hey, you know what? Um, this government has proved itself to be very treacherous and very evil for many years now. I'm not okay with just submitting myself to this government. I think I'm going to start to come up with some unique solutions, some ways that I can, um, you know, do things on my own, become independent. And uh, that is my advice. Um, heard a very shocking statistic actually yesterday. Uh, I was looking around right before leaving the office and um, found an article from the Holton Pioneer Times. Uh, town to the northeast of us and um, and they were actually talking about Patton residence the town where my office is at and they said about how that they're getting worried because of slow police response times what huh what's this all about and um, they said that uh, that there have been ambulance calls that they they need the police the police are supposed to be there to go into the house before the ambulance crew goes in um and my father actually used to work with ambulance he was an emt um for i think it was 25 30 years something like that 911 dispatcher for a while too he did that as a you know another job as i was a little boy and um and i remember he told the story the one time of he got a, a call, um, this would have been probably back in the 1980s, and he got a, a you know, they 911 call, and they drove the ambulance into this rough looking place, and uh, he went up to the door, knocked on the door, and uh, the door opened, and a 12 gauge shotgun came right out into his face. And the guy said, you get off my property. He said, the people called 911, he said, everything's fine here, you know, I'll take care of it. You don't need to be here. Get off my property right now. I'll blow your head off. And my father said, okay, just here to help, you know, whatever. Got back in the ambulance, called it in, said, we need police out here. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Um, and they got the police out there. The police took care of the guy. And, and then they were able to get the, I guess it was his elderly mother or something. And a uh, weird situation. But uh, my father came, you know, that close to losing his life because the police, you know, weren't there um, when they did their ambulance call. Well, uh, I guess that that must, I don't know if it's a policy or whatever, that the police have to go in first. But um, I read that in the article that they're saying here locally that the police have to be there before the ambulance can go in. And they said there actually was a call here locally where the police never even showed up. They said that they waited for two and a half hours the one time, and another time the police didn't even show up. And the police officer, the uh, senior guy, I guess, at um, Holton, Troop F, I always think that's kind of funny we joke about that because there was the old TV show, F Troop, but <laughs> we have the Troop F here in Holton. But um, 
the guy from there, he actually said that, um, that they were actually calling on officers in Bangor, which is, you know, an hour and a half to the south of us. And they were calling for officers down there to come up and help out sometimes. And I thought, what? <laughs> and they're talking about increased drug activity in the town of Patton and everything. And, and uh, we're not sure if we can get officers there in time and, and everything. And, and they said, here's the real st frightening statistic. And I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts out there too. What are you seeing in your area? Um, but we actually, they said that they had 28 troopers and they're down to two. How do you go from 28 to two? Unless it's, uh, you know, that happened back there, the uh, certain hokey pokey in the shoulder um, that I warned about. Said it's uh, not good, it's VMAT2 inhibitor and uh, going to create a cytokine storm and all the other things and the blood clotting and the all the stuff that's come out, turbo cancer and everything. I've known neighbors that have lost uh, loved ones to the just real hyper aggressive cancer. It just shows up and we're not really sure where it came from. It just, you know, they got the hokey pokey and then all of a sudden these things started to show up. And I remember seeing different women in the area that were uh, paralyzed for a while. You know, uh, couldn't walk and things and slowly came back. I mean, it's a bad situation. So um, it's just kind of a thing of, you know, out in rural areas like this, uh, there's really not that much police. There's not that many police officers anymore. Uh, probably about a week or two ago, we were uh, in bed here and, and um, we heard a car coming up the road really fast and about, you know, just not long after that we heard you know police chasing them high-speed police chase <laughs> out here thinking it's not even that safe i mean there's not exactly a, a main road it's a back road dirt road and things so but um it's going to get interesting the bible says that in the last days perilous times shall come uh certainly true and uh, the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. Got that flipped, but, you know, because iniquity shall abound, the, the love of many shall wax cold. Matthew chapter 24 talks about that. He shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. It's all coming to pass exactly as the Lord said it would happen. Um, yes, there is a future fulfillment. <laughs> but uh, let me know what you're seeing in your area because I'm very curious, and let me know what your thoughts are. And um, the time is coming when uh, there's going to be a real separation. And um, you're going to see who God protects and who God does not protect. And you better have a right relationship with the Lord. Um, be counted worthy to escape the things that are coming. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. And just say it looks to me like they're getting ready to pull the plug on America because America is just simply not complying. Uh, their plans for smart cities and whatever else. Uh, I don't think it's going to go too good in this country, quite honestly. Uh, you know, they're going to bring in their central bank digital currency. You just wait. Mm, I don't think that they will. Not in America. Uh, the infrastructure is not here for it. Um, out in places like this, you know, if you're in the city, well, you. I can see it coming in here. Well, yeah, you're in the city. Um, but out here, no. Um, people are too backward out here. Uh, I'm one of them. <laughs> so, but the, like I said, let me know what you think. And uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching.